Okay. Hi, my name is Helen and I'll be on the online prosperity show for today. And I'll be talking to you about how to help busy working mums. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the contentment coach herself, Helen. Helen, how are you doing, my love? Good. How are you, Prosper? You're well? Fantastic. Thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us on the show today. Um, and viewers, if you're going to be watching this show, um, you know, have you ever maybe felt like you're dragging your heels and maybe you're even depressed or you're very anxious or fatigued because of work or whatever it is that you're doing kids family chores everything else that's coming along your way and you're probably worried or you've got grief that's just hanging on and it's not being let go or you're just experiencing physical pain or discomfort half of the time it goes beyond you just taking medication for that you really really need to get your emotions um you know unlocked out of your bodies and those are the things that are probably causing your pain that that sickness or irritability now the contentment coach comes with an array of specialities that she is well versed with helen is specializing in kinesiology acupuncture egyptian emotional clearing technique resonance crystal hearing and rain drop uh, technique also coupled with doctor of chinese medicine now there's a lot for me and a lot of mouthfuls that i just put out there and i'm afraid i might not be saying the right words um, there, Helen, tell us a little bit about your story and how you became so decorated with all these um, accomplishments. Yeah, sure. Great. Thank you very much for that. That was great. Basically, for me, I mean, it was a new venture. Um, I went back to study. I had, you know, came to terms with it was the challenges with nursing my husband twice with uh, two tumors and also nursing my mum with a massive stroke. But unfortunately, she did pass away. And I saw how with holistic medicine, I could help my husband and help my mum. And to me, it was like, wow, you know, this stuff works. And um, how powerful would it be if I could learn these techniques and gain that knowledge and help other people? And I went back to study. I was a mum. I had two kids. I mean, my youngest at the time was only three. So it was a challenge for me with balancing, you know, work, balancing, of course, part-time work because I was studying full-time and managing a family, a household. So I had to learn to look after everybody else and myself because I know if I got sick, then who was going to look after everybody else and using, you know, all the things that I studied to help me basically. And another thing I learned was, hey, being a mum, you know, you still have your own life because most mums get into that set, you know, that mindset that I'm a mum now, that's my job, that's me. And they lose their inner self. They lose what they're all about. And I want to, you know, encourage women that, you know, it's never too late, you know, to find their purpose and their dream. And they can go back to full-time study and don't let anyone stop you because they had a lot of talk, you know, you know, you're a mum now, you know, that's what you need to focus on. And, you know, you're a little bit old, too old to go and study now and venture off to a new career. I mean, you know, and I think what's well, never too late to go out there and follow your dream. And for me, it inspires me um, through my own story, my own experience is to inspire women um, who work, who have got kids, to get out there and um, follow their dreams, yeah. And of course, a lot of these women are overwhelmed because they're like, well, how can I study? How can I when I've got so much going on and teach them that, you know, and make them feel a lot more calm and, you know, and content within themselves to allow them to know that there is that more time for them um, to go and venture out and do what they need to do, yeah. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for that beautiful story right there. And um, um, obviously, sorry to hear about the loss of your, your mom right there. Now, just skipping forward to where you are right now, Helen, um, it, it, it wasn't always like this. Um, when your first child was born, um, there was a few complications and this is where exactly it all stemmed off from. And now you're also helping other moms like that. Tell us a, a, a bit of what was going on um, with your 
um, son at that time? Yes, yeah, so when my youngest one was born, I mean, there was a lot of um, issues there with uh, Ethan. He was born with sleep apnea and, you know, and we didn't know what was wrong initially. There was, you know, always at the doctor's surgery, not knowing what it was, but unfortunately he had enlarged tonsils at, you know, at eight months old, we removed them and they were the size of a six-year-old boy. He couldn't breathe very well. Um, and then after the operation, I mean, it was a lot more better, but, you know, that constant getting sick, the immunity was low, always getting croup. And for me, it wasn't until I, someone said to me, look, I think you should go see a naturopath. And I'm going, oh, God, how is, how is that going to work? And I really sort of, you know, frowned upon natural medicine. But I think for me, my life changed when I had my first appointment with a naturopath. Then she said, look, you know, we need to work on his immunity. And from then, the, the, the rest was history. And I started um, learning about essential oils. I'm a qualified aromatherapist as well. And using those oils with my son and and I was able to help him just with natural medicine, with using um, herbs and using uh, essential oils and no medication whatsoever because, I mean, he was medicated, but there were so many adverse effects there and I wasn't seeing any, um, any light there. So for me, it was trusting um, natural medicine. And that's where a lot of mums have that fear was, how can natural medicine help me? How can it help my kids? How can it help my family? And for me, I've lived it. So I've seen it in real life with my own family. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, that, that is so brave of you to take matters in your own hands. Some people would have just given up. And, um, you know, as, as we notice, a lot of people just watch their life go by or they're just too busy or they're just too frantic and they're just not really sure where they're going to be headed to, you know, and you um, went on and became a life coach and you're now helping, you know, other people define their goals and empower them, um, you know, to really establish their importance. Tell us about the modalities that you um, utilize, the positive EFT, the hypnosis and also NLP and um, some of the timeline therapy that you help, um, you know, busy moms go through um, whatever frantic or um, experiences they might be going through in life. Yeah, sure. I mean, the first thing I do is basically, you know, look at, you know, where they're at. And a lot of the time with the techniques you just mentioned, I do use those tools and techniques and teach them to go home to empower them as well. Because most of the time, these women have taken on board this belief system that I'm not good enough. I can't do this. You know, I'll never be able to do that. And the first thing I really work with is getting them to understand and learn about themselves because they get lost being a mum. They're wearing multiple hats. They're the mum, they're the wife, they're the neighbour, they're the friend, the sister, but they lose in touch with themselves. So teaching women to be more in tune to themselves and knowing who they are and, of course, listening to their language as well and allowing them to reframe their language by using more positive language instead of using negative language that I can't, I'll try, or how am I going to do this? Because the brain can't process those words, they're negative. So teaching them how to reframe their wording, how to reframe their sentences, how to be a lot more positive, using kinesiology to allow to eliminate belief systems and a lot of the time these belief systems aren't even theirs a lot of the time are coming from parental from parents the way they were raised because that's what life is all about that's how you do things but it's not i mean and it's amazing when you eliminate these belief systems and you release these emotions that they've been carrying for a long time that you know so many beautiful things can develop and they can really you know sit there and go wow you know i feel empowered you know i feel that i can you know, go and do something different and, and, and enjoy life and, and feel like, you know, they do deserve a lot better. Because a lot of the time too, women don't think that, you know, by changing these, you know, belief systems, it can really empower them in, in a massive way, massive, massive way. Absolutely. So you did mention earlier on there, Helen, about how women are wearing so many hats. Um, they're the mother, they're the sister, they're the neighbor. And it's quite an overwhelming feeling and having too little time and they have too much to achieve and so many mouths to feed and people to please. And it can cause, you know, tremendous stress. One of the things that you help people with is um, 
teaching them how to uh, manage their time well and um, you know how to use that resource that people can never get back and you do that for students and also for busy moms who are really trying to balance stuff around their family and their family interests. Can you walk us through um, what it yeah. is you actually uh, show us I that? Mean Time management is a massive issue. I mean, that's where, you know, the, where it really starts off too, because a lot of women walk into my clinic and say, look, you know, I'm overwhelmed, I'm anxious. And a lot of it is time frame. I don't have time to, to do this. I don't have time to do that. And it's teaching women that, you know, you've got to really schedule. You've got to really map out your day. And I teach women that you've got to pre-plan, you know, get that diary out. You know, if you're not into the, the tech stuff, you know, get a diary, use a pen and paper, write things down. And, and plan, plan your day. Like, what do you want to accomplish for that day? Because if you don't pre-plan, more than so, things aren't going to get done because you haven't put it out there. You know, you need to carve it in stone. So, you know, you need to put it out there. And not only just plan your day, plan your week. And especially like a time like this before Christmas, it's hectic. I mean, people are frantic. And if you don't plan, you don't sit there and set it out. Well, guess what? Nothing's going to happen because you haven't planned. And then it's, you wake up thinking, okay, nothing gets done. And I teach women how I've got, I do templates for them and I guide them to use my templates on how to manage their day. And most important for me, I really stress that the morning has to flow because if the morning doesn't flow, then the rest of the day just backfires on you. So I always get my women to wake up early um, before the rest of the family wakes up and have some me time before everybody gets up. That me time could be sitting down having a cup of tea or a coffee or read the paper or a bit of meditation, go for a walk, a bit of exercise or doing some journaling and just having that me time, you know, and just starting that day with spending time with me. And then, of course, making sure that everything's itemized and you know you've got your plan, that you know what you need to do and, you know, get the kids up, get the hubby up or vice versa or if you're a single mum, you know, whatever. Just, you know, and, and allow yourself and have that plan in place because if the plan's not there, the schedule, then it's, gonna, yeah, it's not going to work. And you know what? When I plan, I don't feel anxious. When I don't plan, oh, it's just so stressful because I'm always thinking what's in my head, what do I need to get done? But if it's already pre-planned, it gets done. It gets done. Absolutely. Well, just like, um, you know, if you fail to plan, you literally plan to fail. And um, well, in this household, what's not scheduled does not get done. So I can literally imagine what you're talking about there. Now, you have managed to get all these accolades, um, all these qualifications behind, um, you know, your, your back. And it can be incredibly hard for an adult to return back to study. And with so little time, you know, like we have and so many commitments and so many hats to wear. Well, you do mention that it can never be too late and you are a perfect example of showing us that it can be done. Now, how do you help people overcome obstacles and actually inspire others to achieve, uh, you know, no matter what age they are, no matter what position they might be, um, you know, uh, going through in life at that particular moment? Yeah. I mean, a lot of women will say, look, I don't have time. So then we go, you know, we work on the time management, what I talked about, um, and how to use time effectively. Like I know when I was studying, I lived three hours away from the, from the university. So I used to use my three hours traveling time to study my three hours back. But it's also um, women who want to go back and study, it's always that belief, I'm not good enough. And a lot of the time, you know, we use kinesiology to go back to a trauma or an event. A lot of the time it could have been, you know, mum or dad saying, you know, you're not good enough at school or a teacher saying something. So we go back and we, you know, we sort of bring back what's happened in the past and we eliminate that trauma or that event from a particular time in their life because then what's happened, you know, all that is stored in our subconscious and in our conscious and our unconscious mind. So we work with deleting these events and these times to allow women to feel more empowered because if we don't, then they're going to believe, well, I'm not good enough. Where do I have the time? Who am I to go back to study at the age that I am? And it's more about eliminating these belief systems and all these self-sabotages that we put upon ourselves. Yeah. And a lot of the time, yes, it does take, you know, a bit of support from family members, but sometimes we don't have that. But um, 
there's means like you know there's time you'll always find some time you know it, and it depends how passionate you are to go and study like for me passion drove me drove me in a massive way because i wanted to um make a life change for me and not only for me but to help other people so it was interesting it had ignited me it, it excited me study wasn't something that i well, i had to do to get through an exam like i wanted to sit down and study because for me when i did my first degree it was it and it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. It was sort of something that I got pushed into because, you know, you've been in school and it's expected of you to go back and study and, you know, you want to please mum and dad and that's all you do. Whereas for me, this was, you know, a purpose. It was inspiring. It was something that I wanted to do. So for me, study wasn't a chore. It wasn't something that I had to do. So I worked around it. Like I'd sit down with my kids. We used to study together, do homework together. So you make it fun. You, you know, you schedule it in. Again, you know, you just make it work and with a lot of the women they lose their fire they lose their passion so for me using my tools and techniques with eft um using essential oils um and also using kinesiology to find out you know what stagnated them where did they lose that fire where did they lose themselves on their journey and re bring that up to the surface and ignite them and get them excited again absolutely so <clears throat> thank you so much for that now you know somebody might be watching and, and sitting in the audience right now and you know they're just really feeling like they've been dragging their heels and they might even be just depressed and you know always anxious and they're wearing those proverbial hats that we're talking about and they're fatigued they're worried they don't know what to do with themselves right now and they're looking for a more balanced life how can people get a hold of you there helen Okay, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Um, they can get a hold of me on my website, uh, www.elementsoflife.com.au, or they can also join my closed group. Um, they can put a request out, and the closed group on Facebook is called Busy Working Mum Support Station. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Great stuff. I will be putting in all those. Um, you know, I will be putting in all those comments uh, and also all those links right at the bottom there. Now, Helen, I can't thank you enough for your time, your level of expertise, and just the knowledge that you dropped with us on the show today. I thank really you. wish you a fantastic holiday coming up. And thank you, hopefully, hopefully 2018 is going to be a fantastic year for you. Now, before I really, really let you go, 2018 is going to be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, maybe they haven't quite accomplished what they wanted to in 2017 and they have got resolutions all over the place and they don't know how to figuratively start. Have you got a couple of yeah. words that you can just give to a busy mom that really is on the edge and um, you're just going to tell them something that just won't let them, um, you know, jump, jump over the edge or something. Sure. I mean, the best thing to do is really sit down and write your New Year's resolutions. And that means write them on paper, not on the computer, get a piece of paper out, get a pen and sit there and write down what you want to achieve in the next 12 months and write it as if it's already happened. Not that it's not what you want. You write as if in the tense it's already happened, it's already occurred. And make a list. I mean, don't feel selfish. Write down whatever you want to write down. Seal it, put it in an envelope, put it away, and open it up the following year. And you'll be amazed how much you would have accomplished within those 12 months because you've put it out there to the universe, and the universe will find its way to deliver back to you. Nice. But another thing to bear in mind is um okay you've asked the universe you know you want all these exciting things to happen in your life over the next 12 months is to be more aware about yourself in terms of gratitude and showing a lot of gratitude because if you don't show gratitude then the universe doesn't deliver so yeah and the best way to do that is keeping a gratitude diary and every day just jotting something down what you're thankful for it could be the smallest thing like thank you for the cup of tea that i had today that my that my child made for me or or my husband or my or whoever made it for me or it could be thank you for the lovely day or thank you for um my kids behaving today anything or thank you for the new job promotion yeah you'll be amazed that when you show gratitude um how much of these um 
items that you've written down in your uh, list of things that you want for 2018 to occur will come back to you. Yeah, so it's amazing. I get my kids to do it as well, and they look forward to New Year's Day opening up the envelope and seeing how many things they can tick. It's so exciting. Yeah, get the kids involved. It's great. Absolutely. That's a very powerful um, advice there because, like you mentioned, the universe is always conspiring to get us what we want. We just need to notify it what it is that we exactly want. And, you know, the way our brains would work, it will now start working towards getting those. Now, Helen, thank you so much for your time on the show today. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you very much. All the best for Christmas and New Year. Absolutely. Yeah.